Does it not look beautiful, ladies and gentlemen? NBA 2K20, my LeBron James build. I mean, just so many great memories. I, I don't know if anything will ever compare to this build, man. I absolutely loved this build. Let me know what your first thought of NBA 2K20 is right now. Like, what's the when you think of 2K20, what's the first thing you think of? For me, it was build diversity. And this is one of the reasons that 2K20 felt as fun as it did for as long as it did. Every single game you play is against a different build with a person that has a different play style because they're playing on a different build. To me, it's something that 2K21 really lacks and that's why the game feels so repetitive. Hopefully in 2K22, we see more of this. First, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Sleeper. When it comes to hosting fantasy sports, Sleeper is the app for you. Sleeper delivers a completely new, innovative way to go about fantasy sports. And the best part is it's completely free and has zero ads. My favorite part about Sleeper is how interactive it is. Unlike older fantasy platforms, Sleeper has personality and is interactive with social features like text and voice chat. Now, Sleeper still has all the features that these other sites have, like Redraft, Dynasty, Best Ball, you name it. But where Sleeper stands out is it's far more customizable giving you total control over your draft league. If you're looking for a fresh new fantasy sports experience, click the link in the description to download the app today. Thank you to Sleeper for sponsoring this video. NBA 2K20, man, what a time. What a time. There was different builds. Everyone could play on whatever they wanted to and still be successful. You had different play styles. And that's my big thing with 21 that really just bothers me is the fact that every time you get on the game, you play against the same build. And the, no matter who you're playing, they play exactly the same way. The same exact play style. You're about to see in this video, man. Five games in a row on the one score. I cut it up so it's going to be real quick. You know what I mean? Just little highlights of the games. We play against five different builds five games in a row. Now, of course, there was meta builds. You know what I mean? The two-way slash plays, the offensive threats. But everyone had their own style. I mean, you had the pick and roll players in this game. That, you know, the play shots, the O threats, the shot creators. Then you had the ISO players, the the play glasses, the facilitating finishers. Some people were isoing on O threats. Of course, you had the two-way slashing playmaker. That was a really, really popular build. But my point is, people were still hooping on other builds outside of what just the meta most popular builds were. And this video confirms that I haven't been on this game in months. I get back on, I play five different builds, five straight games. And I'm not gonna lie, it made me actually really happy. It was like, okay, what's this kid gonna do? What's this dude gonna do? How's he gonna play with that build? You actually like, it was different. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, as simple as it sounds, it was different. Here we go. This dude's a slashing playmaker with shot creating takeover. Like, what a unique build, bro. Shout out to this dude. That is a unique build. And my whole thing is hopefully for 22, we get to see more of that because that's what keeps the game fresh. At the end of the day, it's a basketball game. We're gonna be playing basketball. How can you, you can't really change it too much because it's a basketball game. It's not like, you know, a made up magical game where you could just add in random stuff like it's basketball. So how do you keep it fresh? You try to make it so people play different ways on different builds. That's one really easy way to keep every game feeling different. But check it out. So this dude's a slashing playmaker. I'm a facilitating finisher. I already see I got the size advantage. So I'm gonna do a little hop step cheese, get the lay in. But we're gonna come right back. We're gonna just snatch it behind the bag, cross between the legs, step it back, pull up, and it's 2K20. So I get a full bar and miss. This dude's gonna run out and check it out. Slashing playmaker, quick stop, pull up, big greens. Now, let me know in the comments, man. Let me know in the comments, what was the thing you liked most about 2K20? Because for me, it was just the diversity in the builds. Like the gameplay itself, there was a lot of flaws. The post hooks, the dribble glitch that literally never got patched. Uh, I mean, close shots were broken. There, there was a lot of a lot of cheese. The hop steps that were broken. And you're going to see me do some of them in here. So it, like you can clearly see it never got fixed. I mean, look, you can post hook right in his face and green. It does not matter. But even with all the flaws, I still think 2K20 was a very, very fun 2K. Like, it, listen, at the time, of course, it was getting a lot of hate. But now people look back and they're like, man, Tony was actually pretty fun. And I never really took it for granted, honestly. Like, when I was playing 20, I played it from start to finish, basically, and never really got bored of it. Like, obviously, I make a lot of builds, so it keeps it fresh for me. But also, like I said, just playing against different builds, different play styles. We went to Pro-Am in 2K20 for the, for the last month of it, and it was a lot of fun. Like, there was so many things we did to keep the game fresh. And even going back on it now, it's still enjoyable. And that says a lot when I've played. Listen, I'm a legend. I played a lot of time on this game. And the fact that I can still go back to it and have fun... That says a lot about the game itself, but check this out. Now, you know, I've been on the court for two games now. Of course, now the real sweaties are gonna start pulling up. You know what I mean? Listen, you get on this game, you're playing straight legends most of the time, but we have another new build, playmaking shot creator. This dude is a guard out here on the ones court. And honestly, 
he probably wins most of his games he was actually streaming shout out to this dude i went into his stream after the game and he was actually really chill and he was a big supporter so shout out to him but check this out he's a play shot i'm a facilitating finisher y'all know my lebron build like we're, we're we're a beast in the paint so if he's gonna play me this tight i'm gonna go into paint and do it i mean look at look at that travel like literally just hop step twice without dribbling clearly a travel but you know this game like i said is broken post hook over him but i mean a little bit lebron does play in the post but probably doesn't post hook more more of a post fader or bully ball type of thing but look at even even on his play shot he's able to play pretty solid defense in the paint and get that block and then I, I end up getting a layup over him so maybe maybe not that solid but my point is bro like he can play on a play shot on the ones court and still be able to have a chance of getting a stop in the paint on on 2k21 if you're a play shot, you better hope the dude steps out of bounds or something because you got no shot of getting a stop in the paint. They're just going to be speed glitching and pausing all over you. But 17-0, to zero, man, this dude is a legend play shot. We're out here hooping. I'm going to be honest. I haven't played this game in a while either. So as you can see, my movement's looking a little rusty. He tries to pull the chair. I pump fake, make him jump, go up, get the lay-in, bully ball in the paint, 19-0. to zero. We just have the size advantage here. But, you know, the LeBron build is, is a little BS build. You know what I mean? Post hook it to win it 21-0 to zero over a legend play shot on to game number four and as i said different builds all day long so we played a facilitating finisher first game then we played a slashing uh, a playmaking slash or slashing playmaker with shot creating takeover then we played a legend play shot and now we're playing a power forward slashing playmaker with play take the other slashing playmaker we played was a point guard so this dude is a power forward so he's like six seven six eight he's basically a very similar build to like the play glass or the facilitating finisher like one of those big iso builds right so it's a completely different play style which again keeps the game fresh and fun i was literally on this game for 30 minutes last night and it was the most fun i had on 2k in about a month or two like i was actually enjoying it i was like okay like every game feels different every game feels fresh and this is with me like as i said i literally didn't even i couldn't even remember how to like dribble i couldn't remember the exact controls to like do like the size ups and the hop backs and all, all that stuff i had to figure i had to go in my mic i had to go into my court on 2k20 to figure out the, t the shot timing and and how to dribble again because it was it was bad right like i haven't played the game in a minute and it was still fun it was still more fun than current gen maybe i'm just burnt out man y'all let me know in the comments am i just burnt out or is the game burnt out like i feel like as a community everyone is just waiting anticipating hoping praying that 22 is gonna give us what we want but we got game point 20 to 4 look how we wrap this thing up little hezzy snatch back hop it back tween cross hop it back tween cross hop it back pull up knock it down 23 to 4 we win that game last game i got for y'all and this is when you know it's just time to maybe just get off for the night and just call it a night because look what we got to play against in the last game bro and i will give him credit it is a unique name okay but this dude is a legend post scoring takeover paint defender i don't even know how he made the build to get paint defender with post takeover but this build is made for the ones court man and he's a legend i was like bro if we if we pull this off i'm just getting off on a positive note because listen y'all remember how y'all remember post scores on this game right if you don't remember post hooks are broken it's really hard to steal the ball from them like you go up against a post score on this game you better hope you don't give the ball up and that's exactly what i'm trying to do here as you can see i'm going for blow by animations right off the rip we get the dunk half spin snatch back trying to get an ankle breaker can't get it go between the legs hop it back he plays it he's playing it well i go for the hop step and honestly i probably should have just shot the three man now one thing i will say about 2k20 even as op as the post scorers were i always felt like i could potentially get a stop maybe it's because you know my lebron builds pretty big this dude messes up and does a pump fake when he meant to do a post hook so maybe he hasn't played the game in a while but i always felt like i could get a stop at least one or two stops like it wasn't to the point that you know it was super but maybe it's because my lebron build is I, I have strength i have post move lockdown badge like i have a bunch of stuff to help me stop a post score but I always feel like I could get a stop. Also, it's also nice to play a game where there's no speed glitching. Like, if you can't speed boost, like, y'all gonna understand the difference between speed. Look, I'm using my speed as an advantage here because he's too slow. Run out, get the little turnaround, pull up three. But y'all gotta understand the difference between speed boost and speed glitch. In 2K21 current gen, everyone can speed glitch. Doesn't matter if you have 30 ball handling and 30 speed, you can speed glitch. 
that's a difference between speed boosting. Speed boosting is literally, you have to have a certain ball handling. You have to have a certain speed, right? So that's one thing that's really refreshing coming to play this game is if you don't have the ball handling and the speed rating, you can't speed boost. It doesn't matter. You, there's no glitch. There's no, you know, post scores aren't out here speed glitching. Paint beasts aren't out here speed glitch. You can't. If you don't have the ball handling rating, you can't speed boost. And that is a breath a fresh air man i'm telling you i got on this game for 30 minutes i had more fun than i've had in a long time i'm gonna stream the ones court tonight on 2k20 i'm gonna go on twitch if you guys don't follow me on twitch make sure you do link in the description i'm just gonna stream the ones court on 20 and actually just have some fun chill out enjoy 2k for a little bit man i told you after we beat the postcard we just hopped off man hope y'all enjoyed drop a like subscribe if you guys are new a little throwback 2k20 video man